Hi folks and welcome to another Odd Artworks. I'm Jewan Moore, illustrator and artist, and I'm continuing with my artistic interpretations of D&D monsters. This week, however, the monster I'm redesigning isn't from the monster manual. For this, I'm going old school, I'm going back to the glory days of advanced Dungeons and Dragons and looking at one of my top two favourite campaign settings, Dragonlance. That's right folks, I'm redesigning the staple foot soldier of evil in that setting, the Draconian. Okay, the Draconian, not to be confused with the more recent addition to the game of the Dragonborn. The Draconian is unique to Kryn, the world of Dragonlance. There are a few different types, some are wizards, some are armor-clad warriors. The history behind them goes that in ages past, Tachesis, the evil goddess of the setting, stole the eggs of good dragons and corrupted them to create an army of foot soldiers for her conquest of Kryn. They are sort of a hybrid between man and dragon. Some have wings, but all of them do very unexpected things when they are killed. Some explode, some turn to stone, and some dissolve into a pool of acid. I love the idea and lore behind these creatures, but to the best of my knowledge, the overall design, which I love very much by the way, hasn't changed too much since the 80s and 90s. So I'm going to attempt to maintain the classic old school fantasy feel of these creatures, and also do something a bit new. This could be tough, but let's give it a go. So there was a few things uh, I wanted to get across in the initial drawing was that these these guys sort of have the, the worst traits of dragons and humans. You know, they're quite cruel, they're bullies. So I really wanted to make sure, first and foremost, this thing was beefy uh, and that it, you know, it, it looked like a bully. So there's a few things I did to sort of get that across, you know, the, the big, big upper body, uh, the, the big... Uh, big jaw that that sort of helps bring that across putting spikes on things always makes me think of bullies and cruelty and things like that um, I was quite keen to have quite a dynamic pose a lot a lot of previous illustrations I've seen of the draconian has the figure just kind of stood there you know in, in an aggressive stance but still just stood there these things have wings they can't really fly but they can glide when they jump out of flying castles to descend on their enemy so uh, I really wanted to get that across to begin with. This ended up being less of a redesign and more of a, an update I suppose. Uh, like I said most most of the design work for these things had been done in the 80s and 90s and hadn't really been changed much as you know there hasn't been a whole lot of Dragonlance stuff uh, since then really. So really all I'm trying to do is modernize it you know sort of thinking about the way the feet work you know sort of making them feel a bit more dragon-like and less kind of just solid chunky legs they're often described as having quite powerful legs so i thought these sort of more springy legs would get that across uh, i was quite pleased overall you know just sort of giving him more of a hunch in his back kind of kind of made that come across to me um color wise uh same principle as always do the underpainting just getting my warms and cools and the values across uh, but yeah, you know, you've seen me do this a few times now, and if you haven't, please check out some of the other videos. Uh, but yeah, I'm not really going to talk too much about the painting of this, because even though it took a little while, I mean, I still got it all done in one session, but uh, it's, it was a long session. Um, the painting did go relatively smoothly. I think I had a fair idea what I was doing to begin with. Uh, but instead, I'd like to tell you a little bit about ha uh, Dragonlance, really, and, and what Dragonlance means to me. So when I, I discovered Dragonlance probably when I was about 16, uh, I had just, well, I was in the process of finishing high school, you know, because uh, I left at 16. Uh, and I was on study leave and, you know, because study was not high on the list of things for me to do, uh, I didn't do any. And I discovered this book that I think my mum had bought for me years early, a few years earlier anyway. Uh, that had a really cool cover and you know I was bored one day and I, I just started reading it and it was the first volume of Dragon the, the Dragonlance Chronicles and you know I hadn't really read any books other than the ones school had told me to before and, and this book really did have an impact on me there was something about the the fantasy of it all um, I'd always been into fantasy and things like that and I'd attempted to read Lord of the Rings I think before that but uh, Tolkien's writing didn't do anything for me and to be honest I still struggle with it uh, but there was something in the way that Dragonlance was written the characters the monsters the relationships between everything it really resonated with me and it's really stayed stayed with me um, recently 
with all the lockdowns and whatnot, I uh, I reread all the Dragonlance Chronicles, Legends, Dragons of Summer Flame, and the War of Souls trilogy, and I was expecting it to have aged horribly. You know, I'm I'm a lot older and would like to think a bit wiser than I was when I, I first read all that stuff. Uh, but actually, it still resonates really well. Um, so if you are thinking about getting into fantasy, you know, Dragonlance is a good place to start. Uh, particularly if you're coming at it from a, a D&D point of view. Um, it, the, definitely the first book has that very kind of gaming table feel to it. Uh, and you'll know what I mean when you read the first couple of chapters. Um, but it's just really great. And I, I was very pleased to read recently that I believe we're getting a, a new trilogy of Dragonlance books. Uh, this summer, which which is exciting, and, and maybe some new Dragonlance D and D, um, which is really exciting. So yeah, Dragonlance holds a very very special place for me, and uh, you know, the Draconians, you know, they're not your typical orcs or anything that sort of appears throughout fantasy. They are something different, and uh, yeah, it's it's nice to to paint. I don't think I've ever drawn or painted them before, so it was it was kind of good to see to to sort of have a go at them and see how I would answer certain problems. Um, I definitely learned a lot about doing wings in this one. I never really, I don't know why, I've never really painted wings or drawn them with with any real thought behind them, but you know, I quite enjoyed doing these ones. Um, so yeah, you know, the other thing was, obviously I'm spending uh, only one session on this painting. You know, if, I, if this was a commission or, you know, I had a bit more time, I would obviously spend a bit more time embellishing the armor playing a bit more with the lighting, you know, adding dents and scratches to things. Uh, but, you know, I'm, my time's limited at the moment. Uh, but it, like I said, if it was a real job, there would have been a lot more gone into it. But as a concept and, and to get that idea of a, you know, kind of modernized version of the design across, I'm, I'm relatively pleased with it. You know, as, as with all things, there's things I do differently. But at the same time, you know, I feel like it, it fits into my view of the feel of Dragonlance, I suppose. Um, so yeah, the, the colouring of his armour and whatnot ends up being quite a deliberate choice. And those of you that have read Dragonlance will understand why the blues are in there. Um, but yeah, anyway, I'll leave you to enjoy the rest of the painting for now.
Okay, just coming to the end of the painting now, and uh, you know, sort of rewatching this, speed it up has made me realise that yes, I am going to do a dragon at some point, probably at a milestone. You know, if I get to a thousand subscribers or something like that. So tell tell your friends about these videos, and and as always, folks, if you liked the painting, give it a like. Uh, feel free to share it with anybody. Uh, and if you want to see more, I release a new video every Thursday. Um, so yeah, give it a like and subscribe. Uh, and let me know what you think. Do you think I, I got a draconian right? Um, is it way off? Let me know if it's way off to what you think a draconian would look like. Um, but yeah, you know, and if there's any other monsters that you'd like me to have a go at, you know, old school ones, newer ones, just let me know in the comments and I will add them to the list. I'm, I'm developing quite a good list of potential monsters to do now. Uh, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed this and I will see you next time. Take it easy, folks.